Now for the actual light cover, which is basically this object here, there's a couple additional modifiers that I want to use in order to give this object some width as well as give it the edge control that we're going to be looking for to apply our turbo smooth to it. So if I go ahead and start at the base level of the editable poly, the first thing that I did was I created just a basic cylinder to start with and then deleted out all of the uh, exterior faces of them just to kind of have this sort of a hole shape in the middle of it and from there I went ahead and went into the uh, the side profile and if I go ahead and just put on a turbo smooth what I'm looking at here is I'm just sort of looking for the basic silhouette of this sort of a curvature to it and so going down up and down in the stack I know that by looking at this that I'm gonna have a little bit of a curvature based on the number of of cuts and edges that I have and where these edge lines meet up. And so the, a quick way to kind of test how the silhouette's going to look is by just toggling back and forth at that low and the high. And so for example, if I wanted to move some of these edges up and down, that's going to alter the curvature um, of the actual silhouette of the shape overall. So for example, if I pull these in just a little bit tighter and then put the turbo smooth, I can kind of gauge basically how much or how little that curvature is going to take place. And so once I've kind of got that and I'm happy with that, the next step that I'll do is I'll go ahead and get rid of the Turbo Smooth to start with. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a shell modifier. And you can find it uh, in your regular modifier panel um, or if you have it added up on your uh, modifier list here. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And what that's going to do is if I toggle that on and off, the shell modifier is going to take the exterior silhouette and then based on this value down here under inner amount or outer amount, I can go ahead and pull this uh, up and down and that's going to give me some depth to the silhouette of the shape. And so once I have a little bit of a depth that I'm happy with um, right around there, that looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing that I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that edit poly modifier and I'll show you how that works. And so from here, I'll go ahead and add it back. And there's a couple things you need to remember about edit poly. An edit poly modifier is going to work very, very similar to uh, just like as if you were down at the bottom of your stack uh, making modifications, except you can go ahead and do it at the top of the stack, which basically means that it's being used in conjunction with other modifiers. Now, there is one thing about using an edit poly modifier that you need to be careful with, and that is that some of your hotkeys are going to go a little bit haywire on you when you try to use them uh, inside edit poly. So, for example, uh, ring select looks like it's working correctly, but you may find that some of your move tools or, or selection tools or some of the other hotkeys that you have set up may go a little bit odd. Now, the quickest way that you can go ahead and fix that is by toggling up and down on the keyboard shortcut override toggle. It's basically this little arrow looking thing. And so by default, uh, that should probably be turned on. And so you're going to want to make sure that you have it turned off. And then that way you'll be able to get your hotkeys back the way that you expect them to operate. And so if I go ahead and undo just a little bit, it looks like I kind of messed it up a bit. But that's to be expected. And so just, just keep that in mind that when you do use an edit poly modifier to go ahead and make sure that you turn this, this keyboard shortcut off. And so now my ring selections and loop selections and, and all that should work correctly. So what I will do here is I'm going to go ahead and just with that ring selection, go ahead and add uh, a couple edges of control just by simply right click connect and all of the functions that you would expect in a regular editable polygon object are going to work exactly the same with that editable poly uh, modifier on there so I'm going to go ahead and just pinch these out just a little bit and then from here I can go ahead and add my turbo smooth at the very top of that stack and, and sort of pull it back just a little bit and see uh, you know whether that's maintaining the silhouette and for now this is looking pretty good um, and working in a stack like this I can always go back for example, I can go down, back down to this edit poly modifier and toggle this button here, which is show end result, and whether that's on and off. And, and from here inside this editable poly, I could go in and I could add a couple more uh, cuts if I needed to, if I wanted to go ahead and ring select this and maybe add one extra edge on the exterior of it. Um, I could go ahead and do that and then go up to the top of the turbo smooth and just sort of back and forth, seeing how it looks and making adjustments as needed. And that's going to work out pretty much for what I'm looking for. So for the round spherical bolts that I have around the exterior of the uh, light cover here, I've gone ahead and selected those. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those out real quick and I'll show you how I lined those up. I'm going to go ahead and grab just that top bolt and the cover itself and go ahead and isolate selection. Go into the front view and I'm going to grab just that top bolt there 
And I'm going to go ahead and center out its pivot point. I'm just going to go ahead and center it to object. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the align tool and I'm going to align it to the cover itself in the center, X, Y, and Z. Go ahead and hit apply and OK. And then using the rotation tool, I'm going to go ahead and just rotate them um, about 60 degrees. And I know that mathematically, if I go ahead and instance that about five times, that should be a uniform uh, amount that's going to go all the way around. And so very similar to how we use the bolts for the top cap um, and that back metal plating, we could use that in a, a circular pattern on a rounded shape just like this uh, by using the pivot points and the align tool as such. So moving along, we've got one more little piece of this bracketing that I need to take care of. If I go ahead and isolate that selection there, uh, you'll see this shape. I've, I've basically just sort of blocked this in with a box and did a couple of little simple cuts and then deleted an interior face that was right there. Uh, one quick way that I can add edge control here is just the same as all the other shapes that we've done where we've taken advantage of the edge extrude is go ahead and grab the polygons uh, on the top and the bottom and then go ahead and switch to edge mode. Now I want to be careful because this is also going to grab that interface uh, or rather that inner edge here and we don't want to utilize that. So for example if I go ahead and hit extrude it's going to add this extra edge loop here which is not what we're going to want to be looking for when we're dealing with an open face. So if I go ahead and cancel that I'm going to go ahead and deselect those two edges and then right click extrude and that's going to grab everything that we're looking for without having to worry about it adding this extra cut line uh, right along the insides of that. So if I go ahead and close that, add turbo smooth, isoline, that's going to give me the shape that we're looking for here as well. 